Hey, I just want to be straight up. I just want to tell you about the goodness of God. Let's get to the show. Hey, thank you for um, watching and bearing with me. Please um, be patient with me. I slick just want to talk about how good God is, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So um, to focus and to really like hone in, I may or may not be looking at the camera, but I think the material is so worth watching um, regardless. And so I just want to talk about just the character, nature, and attributes of God, that his nature and um just his being and his essence is good and it just revolves around just purity righteousness holiness perfection and i think we could just um, focus on the goodness of god because of what the scripture says it says the goodness of god leads men to repentance and he redeems us and saves us from in short internal damnation and sin and even from ourselves most of all so i'm um, just putting it in terms of um some of his activities but not even his activities because even if god did nothing else his whole being um his shalom right um which is the hebrew for like wholeness right his wholeness and his being is good but um when it comes to his activities this comes through his mercy and through his grace and we need to understand what mercy is mercy is when you do not receive what you deserve right and so that is withholding wrath or judgment and just being delayed and long suffering and patient with us and then when it comes to his grace, grace is when you receive what you do not deserve. And so even when we are bad in nature and when we are deserving of death, he exchanges our filthy rags with eternal glory. And just to think of like how he did not have to do it. Jesus received nothing by dying on the cross for us. We being evil and deserving of hell. If y'all can like understand, like don't believe what the world is trying to tell us. We are not inherently good. We are not innately good people. We are innately evil evil we don't need to be taught how to sin we move instinctually in sin coming in subjection to the devil to demons the fall of man but still in his perfection he taking off glory taking off perfection taking off righteousness to put his spirit into a frail human body and taking on our sins, our wrath, our wrongdoing saved us eternally by living the perfect life. And what a good father um, comes and just intercedes upon our behalf with the Holy Spirit, making prayers and intercessions and doesn't let us fend for ourselves. And I just think of even like my natural father coming from um, a single mother household, but also me personally being adopted. The Lord saying well, he has adopted us, those who were far off. Sin separates us eternally from his spirit because God is an all-consuming fire. He is all-powerful, all-knowing, omniscient, omnipresent, and still he came and sojourned with us. He had fellowship with us. He had communion with us. He had relationship with us and chose to take on our bruises, our iniquities um, on the cross and still live that more perfect life. And if we just understood how deserving of hell we were and how good in spite while we were yet 
sinners. He loved us. How immovable his character is. When people treat me badly, I behave in a manner that is reactionary to them. But God does not react to me. He does not react to us, but he is constant. He is unconditional with his love. He is consistent with his grace and mercy and forgiveness. And that is such a good God that even his judgment is good. What an evil God he would be if he allowed everybody into heaven. Do you know how evil that would be to say that you being um, walking right with God um, sees um, people who have robbed you, who have stolen from your family, and they have the same portion and inheritance as you? What type of evil God will not send people to hell? Do you understand the goodness of God that his mercy is able to transform sinners into saints, um, turn um, criminals, that's what we were, criminals and murderers and liars and idolaters and fornicators um, into royalty <laughs> that this same adoption that I have naturally, that we were foreigners, we were far off, we were strangers. Who let strangers into your home? I don't know you. And the same thing is in the kingdom of God. He says, my good and faithful servant, well done. Enter in. And those, he says, get away from me. You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. He says that we are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer infidels. We are no longer bastards without a father in heaven, but we come into the adoption of Jesus Christ through his blood, through his resurrection power, resurrecting the dead. We were dead in our sins, cast it into eternal hell fire smelling like smoke and his goodness redeemed us, pulling us up. Oh my goodness, just that goodness of God to save us when he did not have to do it. We are so deserving of judgment in hell because of our sins, because of our choices, because of our actions. When we knew what doing right is and doing good is and we still chose wrong to please ourselves because we are selfish and narcissistic and self-indulgent but still his goodness pursued us even when we rejected him and even when we didn't want to talk to him and even when we were selfish and we only want him for what he can give us still he chose to have relationship with us and not cut us off how much more have we cut off off people in our own life that only were self-seeking and only wanted things from us, but still he is a good father that he shows grace and mercy to the just and the ju unjust, making the, <laughs> the sun to rise and shine on the righteous and the unrighteous, the rain to fall on us. So Lord, we just thank you. I don't know how this came to prayer, but I just thank you that your redemption and your blood and Jesus and your glory, Lord, is just remaking us, making us into repentance that we turn away from our sin. Oh God, that the hearers of my voice will be endowed by your supernatural power and your blood of Jesus, that they will hate their sin and come into the goodness of God for the goodness of God leads all men to repentance and repentance is to turn away from sin, death, hell, and destruction. And we ask claim the blood of Jesus that you are moving us into glory. You are moving us into the eternal. For we were once finite. We were merely humans. We were frail. We were corruptible beings. But we are coming into the incorruptible, eternal, supernatural, spirit spiritual, everlasting, infinite glory that is you, God. And I just thank you. And I just pray over um, speaking life, the spirit of prophecy, the the gospel of Jesus Christ that he has come to save, that all those who confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, 
Lord. You said that Jesus is Lord, not Savior. Everybody wants a Savior, but we must confess him as Lord, that we will do the will of God out of faith. We are saved through grace. We are saved by grace through faith. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are moving us from glory to glory um, to the more perfect gift. Um, that these shells, that these bodies of dirt will pass away, that our spirits, our eternal souls will be transformed, beholding you, God. And I thank you that we move in power and authority by your word, Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And then I just want to leave y'all with this last um, word. It comes from... 2 Corinthians 3, and it is verse 18. Um, I'll start with 17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed in the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord. So if you can just imagine us being a portion of his glory, being um, breathed in by his spirit, um, we can imagine the sun. We as humans, we um, radiate a certain amount of heat, um, 98.5 degrees or whatever, but beholding the sun, um, in its power, in its perfection, in its heat, are also transformed and um, taking off um, this mortal shell. We have just this internal glory, which is God in his word and in his spirit. And so just how we have the sun being a created thing um, that just radiates such a great power um, that can just consume us, God's spirit can consume us. Jesus, his blood um, can consume all the sin to cleanse us for being the more perfect sacrifice, atoning, making the payment for sin in our lives, that we can be free from the sin debt, which is death, hell, destruction, and judgment. And so this is how we can move um, in our lives, that we can move more eternally. We can move more kingdom minded. We can move um, more perfect in that perfect shalom. Hey, we want to thank you for watching the Blessing Report. Um, come back next week as we just teach on something new and move in the full love, glory, and goodness of God all the days of your life, telling others of that same perfection, love, consistency, power, authority, dominion that is in Father, God, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thanks for watching. Thank you.